Okay, so one thing from what we talked about on Wednesday, I wanna give you a shortcut. I'm gonna give you a formula you can use for these problems. So we talked about figuring out how much we need to neutralize the other. So how much acid do we need to neutralize base? I don't have the energy. And so we did a bunch of conversions. We thought about numeric or their ratio wise, how many hydrogens we have that'll pair up with hydroxyls. But what's really cool is we can use this equation. So let's talk about it. So number of H plus, that is just H is from acid. So for example, if you're looking at this problem down below here, this would have a two, a value of two, because there's two hydrogens that this acid could contribute. Ma, this is the molarity of the acid. Va is the volume of the acid. And you can keep this either in liters or milliliters. Just make sure that for the V, it's the same units on both sides. So if you use mills here, use mills here as well. As you could assume on the other side, this is the, for bases, is the number of OHs from the base. So if we have something like NaOH, it would just have a value of one. There's only one hydroxy. Um, hydroxide there. Versus if we had something like CaOH2, we would change that value to two. Then we have the molarity of the base. And lastly, volume of base. You can also think of this as replacing the whole entire quantity here or just moles of the acid or moles of the base. So sometimes we don't need to figure out the volume or molarity. So you can also just use it as the number of H's. I'm gonna leave off the charges just cause it's quicker. Times the moles of acid will give you the number of OH's times mole of base. So this is just a simpler version. And if you guys remember, if we multiply concentration times a volume, that gives us moles. This is where that substitution is coming from. So let's try it out with an example. This should say one molar. I'm not sure if I fixed that on your guys' papers or not. There's quite a few typos on this handout. Um, but if this is our problem, let's use our equation. So number of H's. From this problem, we get two. So I'm gonna write out the equation here just so it's clear to show what I'm plugging in where. And so I'm gonna put a two in for number of H's. We have a concentration of the acid, it's two molar, and it's asking for the volume, how many mils of the acid. So VA is actually gonna be our unknown. That is equal to one, because there's only one hydroxide from sodium hydroxide, multiplied by 1.0, because that is the concentration times 30 mils. So if we solve for the volume of the acid, we get four molar VA is equal to 30 mils. Divide both sides by four. You would get that your volume is seven and a half mils. So you guys are more than welcome to just use this equation, plug things in and solve for the variable. So I think it'll be less time consuming. Any questions about this? Cool. Okay, so that was just kind of wrapping up last unit. Let's talk about equilibrium. So we've talked about pHs before, and we know that the pH of water is seven, but where did this value actually come from? So if you think about water, we know that in water, the H3O plus is equal to the OH minus. And these have a value of one times 10 to the negative seventh molar. So this is known. Now, 
what the pH is, is we're just taking the opposite log base 10 of these concentrations. That's all we're doing. And so if you take the opposite log of the H plus or H3O plus concentration, that gives us seven. Pretty much if you have a power of 10, for example, 10 to the negative seven, if you take the log of this number, that just equals negative seven. So you're just bringing the exponent down. Now, add the opposite, becomes seven. So if you have a power of 10, your pH of whatever that concentration is just gonna be its exponent. Yes. We're gonna have, we're gonna have like log or log seven. Like it's not always gonna be basic. Correct. So you use your calculator. And you type the hit the button log and hit the number and hit enter. pH is actually a piece of cake. No, you get to use your calculator all you want. pHs are actually like a breeze. They're not too bad at all. But this is a nice trick for just when you guys have a sheet and I give you a bunch of stuff that has powers of tens, you can just do it like this because it's practically just the X going on. Okay. So if you add acid to the solution, it will go down. The reason being, we are working with negative exponents, right? So if we increase the concentration to something like 10 to the negative four, it is a bigger number. But if you take the log of this, four is less than seven. So I want you guys to know the lower the pH, the higher the concentration of that h 0 plus, and that will be a stronger acid. And so because this scale is based off of log base 10, this is why something of pH of four is 10 times stronger than five. It is just a unit of 10. So if you think about, um, for example, going from something like a pH of 12 to that of 10, how many times stronger do you think this is then? 100, 10 times 10. So it's two powers of 10 or 10 squared of difference. And so this is 100 times stronger. So, Continuing on our exploration with equilibrium, we're gonna talk about it in the sense of acids. And so acids can dissociate into their H pluses and their anions to different degrees, just like how salts could. Now we have the term strong. Our strong acids are gonna be the ones that do this to 100%. That means all of the hydrochloric acid turns into H plus and Cl minus when we put it in water. But some cases, not all acids are strong acids. So they dissociate a little bit and then they reach equilibrium. And so if they partially dissociate, we call those weak acids. And we represent this weak acid dissociation reaction like the generic equation I just put here. So if I were to write a Ka or an equilibrium constant for this acid, what do you think I probably do? Products over reactants, just like we've always learned. Except in this case, we are going to leave out H2O. And you're gonna see that as kind of a trend. The reason being, how do you think the concentration of water compares when you add a little bit of acid into it? It's pretty big, it's too big. It's so significant that we'd barely be able to see any changes. So for these problems, we do not include water in our Ka expressions. Now, would we expect strong acids to have high or low Ka's. Hi, right? The stronger the acid, the higher the Ka because majority of the concentration will be in your dissociated form, increasing the numerator, raising your Ka. So the higher the Ka, the stronger the acid. That is the acid ionization equilibrium constant. Any other questions? So when we think about pH, it's the easiest method to compare acid base, base strength. But what it is dependent on is this idea of ionization, sometimes referred to as the auto ionization, but we'll just write ionization of water. And so this is a reaction where if you just think about a water molecule interacting with a water molecule, 
auto ionizes. It actually creates the hydronium and the hydroxide on its own. So this is just something that naturally happens. So when this reaction comes to equilibrium, so the rate of making the ions and then reforming water are equal. So this is when the concentrations equal this one times 10 to the name seven. This value comes from the auto ionization of water. And so we're gonna now start working with this KW, this equilibrium constant for water. Reason being, because that's what we have to do for acids and bases. When we put them into water, we need to have a relative starting spot. And so similarly, it's like how we did KSP with salts that didn't dissolve a lot. We left out the solid salt, right? We just wrote our KSP is equal to our ions, right? We didn't put it over our solid salt. We're gonna do something similar for this KW where if you guys think about the reaction I just wrote up there, what I'm gonna end up doing is just writing it based on the products. We're not gonna consider these in our KW because they just have too high of a concentration. And so this constant, what this will look like is KW is equal to H3O plus and OH minus. So again, this KW is that equilibrium constant for water ionization. Now, we have our KW. We know what our concentrations of these ions are in water. So that would be the same thing as plugging them in one times 10 to the negative seven times one times 10 to the negative seven. Exponents are additive, seven plus seven is 14. So our KW, we get this equal to a value of one times 10 to the negative four. And so we're gonna be able to use this idea because what does the pH scale go to? 14, this is where this comes from. This is why it is a scale between zero and 14. Like what's most basic thing? The strongest base. What does it even do? Like when you put it yeah, in something, what does it do? Like if I put like a really strong acid in something, it's gonna burn it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or like it's gonna like make it deteriorate. Uh, yeah. Like what's something that really basic that really will go like that? Like, really like, uh, Alkaline. Like what's gonna I've read three different bases, so I don't know. I think everyone thinks their base is better. What's vinegar? No, it's not that strong. It's a weak acid. Vinegar is a weak acid. Oh, it's less exciting when you add base to stuff. It's still reactive, but just not as corrosive. Yeah. Okay. So. If we add acid, we are going to be increasing that H3O plus concentration, therefore decrease the OH minus. If we add base, increase OH minus, decrease H3O plus. So I want you to think of this kind of like Le Chatelier's. We reach equilibrium, we add acid, we change equilibrium. How is it going to react? And so the way I want you to think about it is if we have this idea, I'm going to clean this up here for a second. But if you have the idea of increasing acid, you're gonna increase the H3O plus, right? What's gonna to happen to the OH minus concentration? It's gonna go down, okay? And so these are gonna move in a way that the concentrations, when they multiply, they will always equal one times 10 to the negative 14th. And so we're gonna do some examples here. So, What is, let's see where I'm at, the H3O plus concentration if we know OH minus. This is as simple as using your KW is equal to H3O plus times OH minus. And we're just going to sub in the values we know. We know that KW is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. We're looking for H3O plus and OH minus is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we just have to divide both sides by 
that. And if you guys remember exponent laws, that will just give us one times 10 to the negative 10. Because if you divide by an exponent, you take the first exponent minus the second. And 14, negative 14 minus a negative four is actually adding a four, gives us 10. Any questions about that one? Okay. Oh, ma'am. Next one here. So what is the H0 plus ion concentration in a 0 0.0100 molar NaOH solution? So in this case, we're assuming that this is a really strong base, meaning that it's gonna fully dissociate. With that knowledge, we are gonna treat the concentration of NaOH to be equal to the OH minus concentration. And so now we're just going to plug in the concentration of sodium hydroxide into our KW equation. So KW is equal to H3O plus times 0 0.0100 molar, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Divide both sides by 0 0.01. Now you could change this to 10 to the negative second, solve it that way, use your calculator. I don't really care. Um, you would get that the H3O plus concentration is equal to one times 10 to the negative 12. So again, what I was saying here is 0 0.01 is actually the same thing as 10 times, um, 10 to the negative second power. So you can do it that way too. Any questions? All right. So now pHs, that's as simple as just taking opposite log of whatever we find out our H3O plus concentration to be. So what's the pH of a 0.1 molar solution? Well, again, we're assuming because this is a um, we're strong acid that all of our HCl is gonna contribute to our H3O plus. So all we have to do is take the opposite log of that concentration. So pH is equal to opposite log of 0 0.10 or 10 to the negative first, which gives us one. And pH does not have units. It's like, so it's like a log base 10. So it pretty much pulls out how many tens you get out of the number. Oh, okay, next one here. So I accidentally put 2.5, but I wanted to do 0 0.03. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like without one. Um, that is potentially a power of 10. And so here, same idea though, because HCl is gonna be equivalent, you're just taking the opposite log of that 0 0.03 and getting 1.5. So yeah, you could solve it without a calculator, but please use your calculator. I don't care. Any questions? All right, we're gonna make it a little harder. I don't even wanna call it difficult because it's not. And we are gonna figure out the pHs based on base concentrations. So why this is different is because if we know the concentration of a base, we know the concentration of OH minus pH is based off of the H plus. So I'm gonna show you the two different ways you can solve this. One of which would be using that KW equation. So KW is equal to H3O plus times OH minus. Now, if you plug in the OH minus and the KW, you can solve for our H3O plus concentration, which we need for pH. So what I'll be doing is subbing one times 10 to the negative 14th is equal to H3. H3O plus times one times 10 to the negative fourth. If you solve for H3O plus, we'd get one times 10 to the negative 10th. 
So for example, for this problem, if you know this is the base concentration, we need the acid and they add up to, to, to the negative 14, you probably don't even need to show this calculation. I can guess you guys can figure out, okay, if this is the base, the acid is gonna be one times 10 to the negative 10. Um, once you have that, then you just have to take the opposite log of it to get your pH. So opposite log, one times 10 to the negative 10, or a pH of 10, which makes sense. This is a basic solution. Bases have pHs greater than seven. Or the other way you can solve this is the idea, if you take the pH of this whole equation, what I mean here, you'll get a relationship that is 14 is equal to pH plus pOH. If you figure out pOH, that's the same thing as just taking the opposite log of the OH concentration. And so first, what we'll do is find pOH. pOH is equal to opposite log one times 10 to the negative four then it must be equal to four. And then to find pH using this equation, pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So 14 minus four equals 10. So you could do it this way too. Any questions about that one? Okay, one more. Another basis one. So I'm just going to do it on way two. I like to do it the second way. Um, I don't really care what you do. So POH is equal to opposite log of 0 0.03. It's equal to 1.5. pH is equal to 14 minus 1.5 or 12.5. Any questions? All right. So you guys still 